So hi, hello and welcome. Mike Rob Hunter here and look what I've got here. Two microscopes, uh, both of them from the company Swift. This is the Swift uh, SW380T and a newly released microscope, the Stellar One. And in this video, I'm going to compare both of them. Both of them are similar in many respects, but there are also some interesting differences as well. And Right now, I also want to make a disclaimer. This is not a sponsored video. While the company did provide both microscopes to me without any charge, uh, I'm free to say anything that I want. And yeah, I'm not being paid for making this video. So now let's have a closer look uh, at those microscopes. I made already separate review videos uh, for each one of them. But uh, in this video, I really want to do a side-by-side -side comparison. The first thing that you notice is, is that while both of them are pretty much very similar in size, this one here, the Stellar one, the new uh, model here, is a little bit taller here because the photo tube is a, a little bit taller here. Um, and this basically means that uh, for storage purposes inside a cupboard, you might take this into consideration. But it's also very easy to remove uh, this uh, top part of the photo tube, which actually makes it then um, again a little bit smaller. And uh, the same can be done here, of course, also with the other microscope with the 380T. Um, size is all, of course, important, but also so is mass. Uh, both of them have a similar weight. Uh, the 380T has uh, approximately four kilograms. The Stellar one is a little bit heavier with uh, four and a half kilograms also because it is here at the, um, on the side a little bit wider and therefore it's a little bit uh, more heavy. Generally, both microscopes um, yeah, are quite uh, similar in the sense that they have uh, the same magnifications. Uh, so both of them have uh, four times, 10 times, 40 times, and a 100 times oil immersion objective, but the optical standard is different. Uh, right now, this uh, the Stellar One has infinity optics, and the 380T um, has uh, the traditional 160 millimeter DIN standard, uh, which is actually quite uh, common. However, I also must say so then when you check Amazon to buy uh, these microscopes, or if you uh, check the Swift uh, website, um, the Stellar One is also available with the 160 millimeter DIN optics as well, um, at a lower price. Otherwise, uh, those optics are not uh, compatible and when making a purchasing decision, you might uh, consider also if you want to upgrade your microscope uh, with uh, different optics and then you must of course make sure that you are able to obtain uh, the same optics of the same series. Now, I was informed by the company that they will expand uh, their ac accessories, so I expect that hopefully in the future they will also make uh, additional objectives available. Um, but I, I don't know about this and this is something uh, that you have to check uh, when you make a purchasing decision. Now there are a few uh, additional similarities and, and uh, one important thing is, is that uh, the microscope has if you lift it up here, if you just look here on the bottom, yeah, it has a triangularly shaped base. Um, many microscopes are actually rectangular. These two here are triangular and this gives it uh, quite a bit of stability um, as well. It also makes it a little bit more narrow at the front and wider in the back. Um, yeah, it's a design issue as well, but it does give a little bit more stability as well. Um, also concerning the mechanical stage, uh, it actually looks pretty, very, very similar, pretty similar, both of them. Um, and uh, the big difference however is uh, one big difference uh, however is is uh, that the way that those microscopes are powered is different when you turn the microscopes around you can actually see that so let me turn this one here around and also the other one you can see that uh, the 380T here um, is uh, directly powered uh, yeah from with a power uh, from a power source uh, and the uh, Stellar One um, has a USB-C connector here. So the Stellar One, I show it to you over here, is actually powered uh, yeah, with a, new, a USB adapter. It's the first time that I'm actually seeing something like this. It does give it the advantage that uh, you can also connect um, a battery power pack. Uh, however, this is uh, something which is uh, unique uh, and I have not seen this before. I personally uh, think uh, this, uh, the, the way that I use the microscopes is because I always uh, leave them on a table. Um, it's always connected anyway to a power supply. But if you need portability um, or if you are in a classroom which does not have a, um, a power supply on every day, uh, desk, well then of course you might consider also the one with the USB-C uh, um, power supply. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, the switch, the main switch is on the back on both sides. Um, also, the light intensity can be controlled. Um, 
over here there is a knob that can be turned yeah and uh, the, over here on the stellar one there is um, a little wheel that can be turned now uh, what are some additional features oh, that those microscopes have um, one of the things that is uh, really important uh, to say is is that both of these microscopes um, have a pretty good uh, focusing system uh, this means that when you turn the focusing knob uh, the coarse focus uh, on these microscopes the fine focus does not spin fast so the coarse and defined focus are decoupled both of them have the same are the same in this respect and this sets them apart uh, from uh, uh, low-cost introductory microscopes where the focus uh, knobs are not decoupled and when you turn the coarse focus and the fine focus spins faster and uh, I think that this does not give as much precision and the good thing is, is that uh, those microscopes are actually a little bit uh, better in that respect. Both the microscopes allow you also to adjust the tension on, of the coarse focus knob. Um, it's done a little bit differently here on the Stellar one. You actually see it on the left side that there is a ring that can be turned to um, adjust the tension. And on the other one over here, there is a ring which is on the right side. And uh, if you feel that the stage kind of lowers down due to its own weight, then you know that you have to increase the tension a little bit more uh, by turning uh, this uh, tension wheel. Yeah, what else is there? Are there any other interesting differences? Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, the condensers are a little bit different. Um, yeah, basically it is this that the condenser in the Swift 380T can be lowered by turning uh, the condenser, uh, while in the Stellar it is fixed in the topmost position. This is not an advantage and this is also not a disadvantage because when you want to use a microscope, the condenser should always be in the topmost uh, position anyway. Um, yeah, both of them of course have a condensed aperture diaphragm. That is of course uh, yeah, a standard. Both of them have a filter holder where you can place different patch stop filters or, or dark field filters um, in, yeah, beneath the condenser. In that sense, uh, quite, uh, quite similar. Um, they have the standard features of any, any decent microscopes uh, these days. Now, is there um, a mechanical difference? And uh, there's one thing that I really wanted to point out here, where, what I really like here on the Stellar one, uh, which is not a huge disadvantage in the other one, but it just shows a little bit that they have taken an extra step here. And that is the way that the uh, trinocular head is connected. I'm going to show you here. Here on the side there is a little uh, you know, screw knob that you can turn and when you turn it a little bit you have to loosen it and then you're able to turn the trinocular head um, and then you're able to fix it again in position. So for example if there are two people um, using the microscope uh, you have to loosen it a little bit and you turn it and then you have to tighten it a little bit. Now if you don't tighten it uh, then uh, yeah, it's going to be a little bit wobbly here. Okay. Uh, now it doesn't go off. That's important. Okay. Okay, but it's not quite as stable. Yeah? Um, so you always have to tighten it a little bit. Uh, however, here on the Stellar One, what I like is the following that, um, yeah, there is also a screw here uh, that uh, is used to tighten it. However, there is some kind of a bearing, maybe a ball bearing, I don't know, some kind of an uh, additional mechanical system in here. So even though it's tightened, um, you can smoothly turn the trinocular head and it does not wobble. So I, I like this, uh, yeah, I like this a little bit because, yeah, just this uh, from a mechanical viewpoint, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit better. So now let's have a look um, at the eyepieces of those uh, two microscopes. Uh, both uh, of them have now 10 times eyepieces uh, connected. But if you now take them out and if you compare them, you're going to see that the Stellar one, the eyepiece, the front lens here is significantly larger than the one of the 380T. Uh, what is the difference here? I mean, the magnification is the same. The difference is, is that the Stellar one actually has eyepieces uh, that have a uh, that you can also use much better when you're wearing glasses uh, because the eye, so-called eye relief, is larger. So this means uh, that you do not have to go as close uh, to the front lens to see the full field of view. Um, so the, uh, the eyepieces here are a little bit more convenient or comfortable to use. Not convenient, but comfortable to use. Um, of course, uh, you can always uh, exchange the eyepieces uh, also of this microscope uh, if you want to. And you can buy yourself additional ones uh, to upgrade. Uh, but that's actually one of the things that I like here. The field 
of a view, however, of both eyepieces is the same. So it's uh, the field number is 18. Um, so when you look uh, through those uh, microscopes, then you're going to see the same uh, amount or the same uh, area of the specimen. This does not change, uh, but uh, you're able to look uh, through those eyepieces with a slightly larger distance, which is convenient if you have eyeglasses. Another difference uh, here that I would like to talk about is, is about the possibility to carry the microscope uh, and here you can see that over here the microscope here has a yeah you can hold it here in the back uh, while the other one over here yeah it has a vertical uh, opening where you can put your hand through uh, to carry it uh, also that is a question of, of convenience and uh, of a personal preference um, i generally do not recommend uh, that you carry microscopes around of this size um, yeah they are generally with over four kilograms they're relatively heavy already uh, they have to be heavy because uh, they have to be stable leave them on your table, find a place uh, and leave them there um, ideally. But uh, of course, sometimes it's necessary to carry them around as well. So um, I think I already did talk about the, um, I did talk already about the photo tube, but there's one thing that I still want to mention here. And that is uh, the possibility to connect a C-mounted camera to both of them. Um, normally you can, of course, always connect uh, the so-called eyepiece cameras. So uh, this is uh, yeah, the standard, uh, but uh, here um, at the top, you can also take the top off here. And this allows you to connect a C-mounted camera. Um, both of them uh, allow this, allow you to do this. Uh, but this is something I wanted to mention because not every microscope with a trinocular head gives you this possibility. So uh, just be aware of this. Um, I want to also now talk a little bit more about the difference um, in optics between those two. Um, already, I already mentioned that uh, the Stellar one has infinity optics while the other one has a DIN, DIN optics. Um, now what are the advantages of having infinity optics over DIN optics? Or are there any advantages at all? Uh, any advantages at all or are there disadvantages? Well, I would say that uh, for us end users right now, the difference really is not so big. Um, generally, the advantage of this microscope is, is that it has semi-plan objectives. These are pretty good objectives that give you um, a sharp uh, feel, uh, image all the way to the edge, to the corner. Uh, those objectives here are also not bad. Uh, but generally, uh, infinity optics are a little bit more expensive or significantly more expensive. And if you just also compare the size, you're going to see that those optics here of the infinity optics are significantly larger as well um, but for a purchasing decision I would say look rather for other features and do not make it so dependent on the type of standard that you have um, however, in the last couple of years, uh, we have seen now that uh, more and more um, of these relatively low-cost microscopes now start to replace the more traditional um, yeah, microscope brands uh, because uh, they're already pretty good and they get their job done and at a significantly lower cost. Um, so, and I'm particularly happy because uh, those microscopes uh, at, are now affordable for amateur use. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, somebody actually mentioned now in one of my comments uh, uh, um, yeah, that actually why do I refer to those microscopes as amateur microscopes because they are now more and more also used in the professional la uh, laboratory setting uh, because they're already yeah they're getting their work done and they're pretty good already and this is something that we have not seen uh, several years ago yet where essentially microscopes in this price range yeah they were probably not so good yeah um, but nowadays uh, the market is a little bit more open and dynamic and changing and uh, now also uh, for several hundred euros or dollars, we have pretty good devices available, yeah, which was unimaginable just uh, several years ago. Well, I think, uh, yeah, uh, I'm just going to yeah leave your comments behind. Maybe you also have some of those microscopes uh, and uh, maybe some of you are more or less satisfied with them. Leave your comments behind. Uh, and uh, I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, wish you all the best and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.